Hi everyone, welcome to the latest edition of the Bison video blog. Refreshed after a weekend off. You look Ooh, great. Thank you. After, Tan, yeah. rested, ready. Jeff Kolpak back. I'm Dom Izzo. The Bison back in action, folks, for game number three of the 2012 season as they welcome Prairie View A&M, the Panthers, out of the SWAC. Uh, obviously, it's a historically black college. NDSU has a little bit of history of this conference. They played Missouri, Mississippi Valley State uh, back in 06 and 07. Uh, but this is not a league that funds full scholarships at the FCS level. They're obviously well-known, Jeff, because they have the longest losing streak in NCAA history, they lost 80 in a row. Yes, so that's eight and zero yeah. games. Mississippi Valley, who can forget our trip to Itabina, Mississippi <laughs> in the uh, middle, in, actually in the start of this Division I transition, right. the Jerry Rice School. Well, they yep. didn't have many Jerry Rice type players <laughs> back then. I think here's a here's a problem with the, the SWAC and measuring up with NDSU is just a strength factor. It's, it's yeah. flat out strength. They just can't, they can't match up at the line. And, um, you know, uh, I remember Tyler Roll having more holes to go through. Yeah. I could have ran through those. Now, Even you could have. Uh, that's, that's not get crazy no, here. No, seriously, you could have. <laughs> now, this is a game that came about because NDSU needed a, they wanted a sixth home game. They didn't want to go down the two FBS role, which you and I have talked about before. They're paying Prairie View between two hundred dollars and 250000 That's the most they've ever paid to get an opponent here just to get a sixth home game. And that brings up the question is, how long further are they going to go on and do that? Because there's a lot of teams that won't even pick up the phone. Gene Taylor sat here on the blog and told us that about six months ago. That's a great question. Uh, NDSU is going down the road of Florida State right. and Savannah State and games like that. Now, is this going to be 56-7? to 7? I think it could, yeah. obviously. It's, uh, uh, Prairie View has given up a ton of points, at least 42, 44, 31, 31 in, their, right. in their first three games. NDSU is... Uh, uh, got an offensive line, I think, that's uh, very strong and, and, and solid, and that's where the game's going to be won and lost. Maybe the biggest bummer for you, the band's not coming. We were yeah, told I was just the, the, mention the Prairie that. View band yeah. was supposed to come, and now they're not going to be here. Yeah, really well-renowned uh, yeah. drum band, drum yep. majorettes and, and things like that, and, and that was the uh, story was they were going to bring the band. <laughs> right, which never happens for visiting teams. Right, and so people at least want to stay through halftime <laughs> instead of going back out in the tailgating area and finishing their cocktails. And it's an early afternoon kickoff, too. It's a 3 o'clock kickoff on Saturday. Let's get to actually on the field stuff. Some depth chart changes here with the bye week. Andre Martin now starting at left cornerback, replacing Brendan Pierre. I can't say I'm completely shocked given Martin's pedigree from when he was starting at Northern Iowa. Uh, it's now him and if Marcus Williams is ready to go as the two corners on Saturday. Yeah, the reason he won the job is it took him a while to pick up the Tampa 2 language and, and the way NDSU goes about doing their system. Uh, he did that, I think, through fall practice. And apparently at Colorado State, he was, he great. was graded yeah. out to have a, have a better game than Pierre. And NDSU doesn't mix, mess around with their starters' backups. If the backup's playing better, and we, we had that with Travis Beck yep. last year who overtook uh, uh, Jemison. Yep. And Carlton Littlejohn now played more and more. If you prove yourself, you'll play. I go back to a couple years ago. Colton Hegel was in that role. Cyrus mm -hmm. Lemon was his team captain. Yes. Hegel came in and replaced him in the middle of the season, and we all know that that was history after Good that. Good little step. I, I remember there. that one. Yeah. I, I, I have something occasionally. Let's stay with the secondary, something mm -hmm. you and I both talked about back in August. That was the deepest position on the field. Obviously now with Hegel's loss, Marcus Williams had meniscus surgery last week. He's still questionable if he plays on Saturday. So clearly the depth will be tested on Saturday, even if it's against what most are considering an inferior opponent. Well, depth at cornerback. I think they're, they're, yeah. the, the corners are, are well uh, considered to be the uh, you know, strength of the defensive Correct. backfield. Now, Brian Shepard's going to have to do double duty, I think, as a backup. He's going to have to do a backup not only as the free safety behind Dudzik, but as a strong safety behind Bobby Ullman. So he has to learn two different spots. Uh, the thing about strong safety, you're up near the line of scrimmage a little more, so uh, you have to be a little more physical and maybe take on uh, a tight end once in a Look while. Look at your knowledge here, knowing the Tampa 2 defense. There's nothing I can't well, do to right? Know. Ryan Smith's health, something we've harped on here over the last two years on the blog. I think I said it last week. Uh, he's missed five of the last six Bison games going back to the end of last season. He's questionable again. Craig Bull said he didn't practice all last week. When does this become a concern uh, for their staff to say, we can't plan to have him in the game? Well, for me, I, it's a concern now. It was a concern last year. Um, it's one thing to miss last year a little bit late in the season, yeah. but then to have it reoccurring this year, yeah, I, I, is this going to go on all year? I mean, let's hope not. He's he's such a good player. He's a he's, game changer. He, yeah, he's so uh, 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 perfect for this offense with his ability to return punts and kicks and his ability to get open. Really shocked us with his ability as a receiver. Now that puts a little more 
onus on Trevor Gebhardt, yep. who's now the number three receiver and probably move up to number two. Here. And he stood out against Colorado that day when Gebhardt got the necessary reps and got in the game. With Smith's injury, and if Marcus Williams doesn't play, that means they have no punt returners with any experience. Craig Bull told us today Jordan Champion will get a look uh, if neither Smith or Williams can play on Saturday. Well, if the biggest concern is punt returner against Prairie that's true. Dom, it could be. <laughs> I don't think that's the biggest concern. I think it's Esley Thornton to see how he can actually play because next week, that's when the rubber hits the road, obviously, with a conference opener. And we haven't seen Thornton got in at the very end of the game against Robert Morris. Obviously, he had a hamstring injury uh, in the Colorado State week. I, I like to see how he performs this coming Saturday. They do really need do. to find linebacker death, no question about it, because uh, so far the offense has had sustained drives in, in the first two games. Yep. Uh, what if they run into you and I where they go th like three or four straight three and outs Correct. and your linebackers don't get a rest? It puts a little more, um, a little more uh, what pressure, I pressure yeah. yes, on, on Grant Olson, especially in the middle. Can't get hurt like we talked about at the end yep. of the Colorado State game. He'll be our cover boy, by the way, for Saturday's game day section. There you go, a little tease there. Yeah. Uh, over the weekend, Cal Poly became the ninth FCS team to win. The record is 10, so it's still very possible. Obviously, now we're getting into the conference schedule, so those games will peter out. The last Missouri Valley team to play uh, will be this weekend. South Dakota plays at Northwestern. I don't see the Coyotes winning uh, this weekend in Evanston. But that is now the fourth. Fourth Big Sky school to win an FBS game this year. The Missouri oh, Valley your question has is, three. Is the Big Sky well, better than the Missouri Now, granted, Valley. the Big Sky has three more teams, so I guess maybe we have to cancel that out. But top to bottom, I'll ask you, who's who's the better league right now? Well, right now it's Missouri Valley because the Missouri Valley has a defending champion. Yep. It has a number two ranked team, or at least till Sam uh, lost to Baylor, which, by the way, they had Baylor They on did. The that could have been number 10. And uh, and historically, I just think uh, in the last few years, Missouri Valley in the in the uh, power pole mm -hmm. has, has figured stronger than the Big Sky. Montana nor Montana State did not play in FBS, by the way. I should point that out this season. Why is that? Well, that they also play Division twos, so that lends to think that they have and to why run. Why is that? I, that's a whole other debate yeah. for another time. But it's an interesting scheduling theory. I will throw that out there. Uh, our Saturday selections will come up later this week, but I want to get your thoughts. The conference opener does begin, and it's a massive game. The Bison fans probably paying more attention to that game than maybe the Prairie View game, and that's Northern Iowa at Youngstown State. That's obviously the next two opponents for NDSU. Huge game. Ten bucks says NDSU has been concentrating on UNI the <laughs> last two weeks, even though they deny it. Yes. In fact, $30. <laughs> You're throwing money down here. I don't know if we can do that online. Also, South, no, Dakota, State, <laughs> South Dakota State plays Indiana State. That features the top two rushers in the FCS. Shakir Bell, who ran for like 1,000 yards Saturday, and Zach Zenner for the Jacks. Both have been really, really good. So at, at this year. rate, Zach Zenner is going to be a spokesman for Zorba's Pizza. <laughs> Perfect. He's got it, right? Yep. That'll wrap up this edition of the Bison Video Blog. Join us Saturday. We'll be in the Bison tailgating lots. Come find us again like we were for the opener with Robert Morris. Our pregame show will start around 1 o'clock, the live blog at 2, and then kick off at 3.